So what I was saying was that, um, of course, yesterday we used this term biocapitalism. I was referring to ongoing disputes among uh, experts and uh, scholars working in this field, disputes around whether or not uh, we are really facing a new mode of uh, production. Uh, and I was saying that in any case, uh, a number of authors do conceptualize biocapitalism as, uh, in any case, a new regime of capital accumulation. And uh, they, what they tell us is that uh, it's uh, uh, a regime that has been consolidated in the last 30 years. Uh, it's a regime which is uh, triggered by um, the so-called molecular and informational revolutions. It is also triggered by uh, the internationalization of the, uh, the US model of intellectual property rights. Um, and it is uh, uh, underpinned, of course, by the, uh, the strengthening of uh, financial markets uh, and the extent to which financial markets uh, fuel knowledge-based enterprises. Uh, that's, I'm summarizing that debate. Uh, uh, it has all its nuances, but that's not uh, our issue for the time being. The key thing um, I want us to keep our eyes on, it's the uh, proposition that biocapitalism has turned life into property. That's what uh, I'm really interested in. It has turned life into property in the sense that it calculates it, it manipulates it into a range of life-based commodities and services. That's what uh, experts mean by uh, biocapitalism has turned life into property. I have tried to suggest during the last two days that uh, life as a commodity is not limited to human life. Because when one reads that literature, that literature is deeply anthropocentric, meaning the human is at the center of these debates on the manner in which biocapitalism has turned life into property. Most of the research we have uh, show, in fact, how it has turned human life into property. That's why I, that's why I mean, I say that uh, it is a very anthropocentric uh, uh, set of uh, studies. But since the last two days, we have been talking about the human but also of other entities. We have really devoted all of our time referring to, let's just call it non-human entities. And therefore, uh, the uh, time has come then to uh, insist on the fact that non-human bodies, non-human lives, are also key targets of biocapitalism. In fact, biocapitalism's key raw material is not simply life. It is, as I just said, the uh, malleable space in between life and death. So, Let's then move on and say a few things on 
that in between life and death. And 